Hey Google, set two minute timer. Okay, two minutes. And we're starting now. Morning, girl. Morning. So what's up, fellow journeyers? So what is it like to be self-isolated in an RV compared to, say, self-isolation in a house? And, and just to be honest, if you're looking at living the RV life, um, a lot of your days could look kind of similar to self-isolation in an RV, especially if it's raining outside and you're in an unfamiliar area or you're in an area where there's like nothing to do other than maybe the national park you're parked in. So I think one of the big misconceptions we have with RV living when we first started doing it, it reminds me a lot of this box of blocks we got for the kids for Hensley slash JJ's birthday. So when we thought of the RV life, I think we thought of it as like an empty box where we could like do whatever we want, whenever we want. Freedom, right? So that's kind of how we viewed it. Because before we started living in RV, it all felt like super structured to us. We were like in this box and we were kind of being told like, where we had to work and when we had to be there and what our structure for the week would be and you know what time we're going to get up and what time we're going to go to bed and you know essentially almost like a lot of our life and our day and things we were doing were just all planned out and it was in this nice neat box but it was kind of frustrating like we wanted we just we didn't want that we wanted freedom we wanted an empty box we want to do what we want to do when we want to do it but what we found out was rv living it wasn't really like that empty box at all because if you have an empty box with zero structure zero plan, zero commitments, then like everything, like, it doesn't go back together at all. So for us, RV living is an empty box, but there's still some pieces that go in place and lay in place. And that's what today is about. It's not about, every day is definitely not the same RV living and that's nice. But at the same time, if there's no structure, if there's no routine, then it's just total chaos. So one thing self-isolation has done is given us an opportunity to practice uh, the obstacle of isolation and that empty box. <laughs> Here, buddy. Something that has really helped me is first thing, like, getting dressed which for me is putting workout clothes on because that will get me motivated to work out so if that is not something that you want to be doing um then just getting dressed for the day because i know serena williams always said you know for her she said if you look good you play good if i have my workout clothes on i feel so much more motivated and i'm already halfway there and so that resistance is you know kind of cut in half or I'm 90% gonna work out if I have my, <laughs> my workout clothes on compared to in my pajamas it's like mm, I don't want to get out of these comfy pajamas I feel comfortable so definitely getting up getting dressed feeling good definitely gets me motivated for the day So when it comes to working in an RV or as far as our routine, when it comes to work, uh, we have definitely done different things, tried different things. It's varied a lot over the last pretty much five years of living in an RV based on the RV we've been in, based on whether we're moving that day, based on where we're at. Well, now it's starting to be based a lot on, honestly, when the sun comes up and when JJ wakes up and <laughs> what we could do. Because when JJ is waking up, I don't know. Yesterday he was up at 5:45. I mean, today he was up a little bit later. So it's really shaken up my routine I had for years, where I would wake up at six o'clock and I would work until seven, seven thirty at least, maybe even eight o'clock, and then everybody would start getting up and then we'd start our day. So the new routine, <laughs> since JJ has chosen to uh, shake all that up, is that I work for one to two hours from like. 8.30 to 10.30 or 9 to 11, kind of that range. And as comfortable as it probably looks to be working in a bed, I actually don't prefer to work in the bed. I don't ever work in the bedroom pretty much like this later in the day because if I'm tired, it just like lulls me to sleep while I'm working. But in the morning, I'm pretty alert. I'm pretty awake and it's okay. I can do this. I would much rather have like a stand-up desk like what we had in our Airstream or have a different place. I will sometimes work in the living room at the kitchen or at the recliner or somewhere else. But I think just one of the big struggles we face is that when you're working from home 
and you're constantly working out in the open, which is really hard not to be working out in the open in an RV, and your kids see you working out in the open, they, they, want, they want you, they need you, or maybe it's sort of like when they see you talking on the phone and they're tugging on you, maybe they don't, and they just, they just want attention because <laughs> I see they're not getting it. It's very difficult to get work done for me, but then also I don't like that my kids see me working and ignoring them either, so I don't think that's a good thing either. So I, I do try to have find somewhere <laughs> where I can work and not be seen. So we dropped the truck off for a check engine line, a bunch of other stuff um, last week. So I'm gonna call him. Oh. Hey, David, Nathan Moss. Um, I was calling just to check in on the Dodge Dually. Check engine light was, we went and drove it some more. What it done is it picked up a deviation of your uh, coolant. It was showing a large deviation in, from when you took off to when you stopped. Somehow it measures it. Huh, okay. That's what the code was. Okay. Is there anything I could do about that? It's just kind of a fluke thing, you think? or? No, just keep an eye on it, really. Okay, but the coolant level looked fine and everything. It just... Yeah, the coolant level was good. Anyway. Okay, okay. So nothing major on the check engine light. It looks like a fluke thing, so... <laughs> what are you doing in here, huh? Hey, JJ. Whoa! <laughs> good job! <laughs> <laughs> Something strangely therapeutic about throwing balls at your kids. Pew. <gasps> Pew. Hi, baby. Is a week longer than a year? A week longer than a year. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like it. Get me out of here. Are you ready for your nap? You getting sleepy? Get the butt catcher quick! You go get it. I'm not touching that thing. He's coming for me! Female elephant beetle. That's a female elephant beetle? That sounds slightly made up, but okay. You're gonna have to help him a little bit, I think, Hensley. He's uh, vertically inclined. Go from behind. He might be venomous. He's not venomous. See, buddy. Just finding something that you love to do, I think is key to working out and being consistent. I have a set time every day. I'm more, it's like it's scheduled out. Um, I don't even have to make that choice to work out or not work out because I know it's scheduled out, which I used to hate, but now I don't even have to like sit and dread it because I know that's what I'm gonna do and I feel better when it's over. So us doing this, schedule has really worked out good. What are you gonna say? What's your sentence gonna be? Unicorns. Oh, there's multiple unicorns, okay. What do you got there? Tadpole. That's a type of fish. Is a tadpole a fish? Yes. What is it? What's it gonna be? A frog. A frog, is a frog a fish? No. What is but it? It's a amphibian. We've discovered our best time to do Hensley's schoolwork is when JJ's napping, so. <laughs> When he's napping and workout's done, then we do homeschool with Hensley. What do you always tell me? Kids are what? Kids are... What do you tell me? A lot of work. Kids are a lot of work. <laughs> it's a homeschool and it's like an empty box. It's a clean slate, which is really cool. But if you have no structure, it's almost more overwhelming, right? That's the story of my life, though. I need a little structure, but too much structure stresses me out. But having no structure, How then I get nothing done. Eggs? Because when we started this lifestyle, I, I resisted. I resisted structure because I thought, no, I want to be free. And we have definitely flourished when we started uh, incorporating a schedule. And it's flexible, it's relaxed, but we all know what to expect and we get so much more done that way. Especially helpful during this the self-isolating time. I feel like the, the first two weeks, we did not have a schedule. I barely got out of my pajamas. Nothing was getting done. And finally, once we dedicated our lives to having somewhat of a flexible schedule, I mean, so much more has been, been done. It's been, it's been the key.
Thinking hard or hardly thinking? <laughs> I think all this has kind of helped us think outside the box as far as groceries and stuff too, because we can't really, it is one thing about an RV, it's tough to stockpile stuff. We have done more, I guess, online grocery delivery, that kind of thing. Probably had to plan out, I guess, our meals a little more. Maybe when we're gonna eat, what we're gonna eat. And we, because we've done more eating here at the RV <laughs> than eating out too. That is a loud bird. It's probably the one that wakes us up every morning. Yeah. It well, wakes, wakes JJ up that wakes us up. That's exactly how it goes. <laughs> the, we've never done the grocery pickup or grocery delivery stuff even a chance. And, um, I've always been... I'm not say we've grown to love it, but we've grown to like... It's been okay. I've always been interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess this kind of just like pushed us over the edge to give it a try. Mm -hmm. There's definitely pros and cons of both. I love that I can be reading books with my kids while my grocery shopping is being done. You know, it helps me um, be here with them and be more present in mm -hmm. the moment. But then I also don't mind grocery shopping and I feel like, you know, you're relying on someone else to like pick those. They'll pick the um, substitutions. They're interesting sometimes, yeah, yeah, the substitutions. But it's frustrating because the stores are out of so much and I've done all mm -hmm. my meal planning and then I didn't get what I needed and I'm not at the store physically picking things out. So then, you know, I don't get everything I need a lot of times. So then we'd have to be more creative with coming up with stuff. But there's a lot we can't control. But I guess with our food, we try to take control of we can eat healthier. Mm -hmm. And people even, don't stockpile the he healthy stuff as often. Either, that's so. true. Usually you're... <laughs> You know, usually your organic and healthy stuff mm -hmm. is still left. We do pretty healthy and we do once a week. Um, I think some people might stockpile for two or three weeks at a time and get more dried goods and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty we much the more fresh we've taken. We fresh, mm -hmm. more fresh food. Yeah. So by the end of the week, it's mm -hmm. time to head back to the store. <laughs> Had more time to try new recipes out because we have more time being at home. So I actually made chicken salad with Greek yogurt this time instead of using any kind of mayonnaise or anything like that. It's actually really good. You hungry? Want some lunch? It's early afternoon, it's kind of like my project time, and there's almost always some sort of project to be working on. Sometimes it's nothing more than like just taking the trash or cleaning up out here, that kind of thing. Sometimes it might be something like installing the water filter. Something as simple as trying to keep a bird from building a nest inside of our hitch. This thing will not give up. <laughs> I've put a, uh, got a fake snake, which is not doing any good. Yeah, I'm sure you can tell what that is right there. Apparently that smell doesn't help at all either. I'm really trying to figure out the best thing to do. <laughs> I just do not want that thing building a nest here. Not just for us, but for the bird as well. Probably not the best place to have your nest if we're gonna be hooking up and towing this thing. At some point, hopefully. But as uh, the day goes on, kind of make a shift from like mental projects that I do in the morning that require more thinking, creativity, that part of the brain, to as you eat lunch and you have that downtime. That bird. Hey, hey, get out of there. Get out of there. Get out, get out. Go. Give up. Not for you. Move on. Snake is not doing the trick. He's right there. Moving from more mental, creative type projects to after lunch when you have that lull, kind of doing just getting out, doing some physical stuff in and around uh, the RV, the home base, that kind of thing, uh, has worked really well versus maybe the opposite where I do something physical in the morning and then in the afternoon I've got that mental lull where it takes me twice as long to edit or think about things for the channel or the brand or other projects we're working on. There's gotta be something here that would scare that bird. Are they scared of dinosaurs? You scared of dinosaurs, little bird, huh? That's a pretty scary duo. Let's see how that does. Probably not gonna work. Uh, this makes a lot of noise, maybe that'll work. Look at all that noise. There we go. There we go, that's a lot of noise. If you're interested in workout stuff, let us know in the comments. We don't know what we're doing. We just keep moving around hoping the weight comes off. Right, babe? It's, it's terrible. <laughs> we actually know what to do, we just have a hard time doing it. That's probably, probably the core of what most people struggle with when it comes to weight loss and staying in shape. <laughs> I don't know that it's like super complicated. You overachiever, are you picking that up? I took some weight off, she usually can't even pick that up. You're barely in the shot, I'll just crop that. That's the wrong foot. Got me all flustered over here. 
So in between making me look bad, we also do, uh, do run and walk. I don't know why we haven't discovered kid quiet time before now, <laughs> but it has absolutely changed my life. We can't go too far because obviously we don't want to leave our kids, but that doesn't mean that you can't get out and do something. And so we have implemented a quiet time where mm -hmm. when JJ takes his, his nap and, and Hensley, you know, she can, she needs that reset button as well. So we just like let her read some books, lay in her bed, like have a reset. But now Marissa, whether I do this or not, this is sort of her time to recharge. Uh, my time to recharge just made me, made me sound lazy for just a second. It's actually very difficult to do. <laughs> so I need a time every day. I've tried meditation, it's really tough. But uh, I found that I'm decent at taking naps. So I figured that's <laughs> kind of really, like meditation. You really do. It's one of your skills. <laughs> so, and it's <laughs> way harder than you think to take a nap in the middle of the day with the kids running around. The big thing is like, we constantly have ideas in our head. We have comments on our minds. We have video ideas. We have things we're working on project wise. We have things with the family. We got all the usual stuff relationally and all that going on. So there's all kinds of stuff running on in my head. And I think I just need that time every day just say, okay, just, just cut it off, cut it off. I need to focus on just uh, trying not to think about too much of anything. Not every day, but a lot of days. I literally, I do, I set my watch for 30 minutes. I never sleep that whole 30 minutes. Sometimes I don't sleep at all. I just tell myself, I'm gonna close my eyes, turn the lights off, mm -hmm. and I do not open my eyes until that alarm goes off after 30 minutes. Sometimes I sleep 25 minutes. Sometimes I don't sleep at all. Today, I don't know that I slept at all. <laughs> if I did, it was less than 10 minutes, but um, I just think for us it helps to have that time to kind of refresh and get a restart a little bit I guess on stuff because if your mind's going 24-7 it's like anything else in your body if your mind's going 24-7 all day like it's just a lot it's a lot so it's good to kind of try to shut it off just a little bit so we're gonna walk this out and then uh we're gonna interval this thing because Marissa's in intervals oh I love intervals so intervals we're basically gonna walk we walk one time and then we run back and we walk one and run one so we're gonna knock 10 of those out real quick Probably not real quick, but we're going to knock them out. <laughs> I heard a quote recently by Winston Churchill, and it said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And that quote literally changed everything for me. Once I heard that, I mean, I've seriously been in this lake this dark place these past few weeks I mean this is just hard on everybody I know it's just um, there's a lot of fear there's a lot of unknown it's just a lot to take in and I'm even though I'm an introvert I'm a very social person and my relationships mean a lot to me so it's been really hard I just really sunk deep into this this hard place and when I heard that quote it kind of changed everything because I thought, you know, that is so true. There is so much unknown and so many things I can't change. I can't change that there's a oh, cat, gosh. <laughs> I'm jumpy, Pico. I can't change that there's a virus. I can't take it away. I wish I could. I wish that I could take everyone's fear and sadness and grief away. I wish I could make everything go back to normal, but I can't, I can't do that. And it doesn't change everything if I just wish for that or hope for that. But what I can do is make the best out of the situation and I can, I can work on myself. And I guess I had, I hadn't done that. I hadn't been focusing on what I was in control of or what I could do and that I could really use this time to be beneficial. And so I started focusing on self-care. I'm telling you, that has changed my life. I mean, I've worked out and done things like that, but never like really focused on making myself better mentally, physically, spiritually, like taking that time and setting it apart. Honestly, I mean, this time we've been given, we can see it as a negative and it, I mean, it is in a sense, obviously, but it's also a blessing. It's, it's time we've been given, time with our family, time to self-reflect, time for growth.
<laughs> Are you going crazy? You can't go crazy. Aw, don't go crazy. You guys good? What's on the menu tonight? I made some vegetable curry. Tons of vegetables. I love Thai food. <laughs> and I've been trying to figure out a way to eat more vegetables. So I just sauteed up a bunch of vegetables. I had shredded some chicken in the Instant Pot. And where's that? My brother suggested uh, this curry paste I got off of Amazon. And it's it's really good. So just mixed it with some vegetables and chicken and Amazon? coconut milk. How did you get it off Amazon? I ordered it. And she ordered it. Yeah. Wow, I was only electric. Family's electronics. So this is pretty much how our day ends, almost every day. We spend it cleaning up the messes that have been made. So yeah, all this has got to be cleaned up. Kitchen's got to be cleaned up. And then all the toys got to be cleaned up. Because it is sounding like rain tonight. You almost got them all put up? You're doing good. You're going to growl? Thank you, JJ. That helps. This Maybe boat. you can tell me what this is saying. Tax power. It sounds like tax power. Marissa thinks it's cat power. What is it? I don't know what it is. It has some catchy music when it gets done, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get a dance. Get it done. I know. The unfun part about eating. Eating's the fun part. Cleaning it up. <laughs> Marissa's done. JJ's still going strong. They wear you out, man. <laughs> It's like a marathon. You just gotta push to the whatever that's called. The finish. Finish line. <laughs> wow. Oh. Da da. Da da da. <laughs> da da da. Do you wanna read it? Sure. Where's the backpack? Peekaboo. Where's Hensley's shoes? Peekaboo. She told me this is. Big blanket, okay, big blanket. <laughs> oh. It will be okay. In a dusty shed in a rickety shelf, hidden in a cozy packet. Come here. Get out. I love you. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to look like when I edit this, but it felt like a long day. Well, every day when you're self-isolating feels like a long day. That's... But we've learned a lot about ourselves through this process. Yeah. You just, just gotta take the positive out of what you can with what's going on, especially mm -hmm. when you don't have control over things. A lot of positive comes from slowing down and mm -hmm. just really reflecting sometimes. So the last hour of the day is when I kind of try to get caught up on emails and things that don't require too much mental thought. We both kind of get caught up on, you know, just wrapping up ends <laughs> and things like that as far as work. Um, and then basically just wrapping up the whole day. So we're gonna wrap up and link to a video if you're on YouTube, you'll see suggested videos, a suggested video called RV Living on a Rainy Day, where I cut my hair for the first time. That's actually came in handy. Own. It actually has, I've built off that skill, so we learned a lot <laughs> with that one too. So we'll link to that one. If you guys haven't seen that one, you can check that one out. Appreciate it, it's been fun. We're gonna wrap things up, finish up emailing some other stuff. Until next time, catch you guys later.